Hello. I'm going to start off by asking some questions. So what lets your song know whether it's going to be on your fingertips or on the tips of your nose? Do you think that environmental factors that mutate your genes can become hereditary? That the life choices you make today do not only impact you, but four generations ahead of you? Let's start from the very beginning, from the cells that are formed right after fertilization and are located in the blastoma. The blastoma crust is an envelope, or a little chamber, that contains the first cells that are formed before a human actually exists. And what these cells are called are embryonic stem cells. What these cells retain that is different from any other cell is something known as a pluripotent gene. The pluripotent gene gives them the potential to become any cell in the human body and to differentiate itself, to become a skin cell, or a blood cell, or a liver cell. And how your DNA actually works is that it's formed by genes. And genes are just like paragraphs of an essay. Individually, they all have their little information or purpose to convey. And together, they make up an essay which makes up all your genetic information, which makes up you. So let's clarify. If you take a look at this, this is a full-on paragraph with lots of words and four different paragraphs. And notice that all of them are visible to you. Now, it's still the same essay and you still have those same four paragraphs and the words are still identical. But differently, you can't really see the second paragraph. And this is what happens when genes are turned on or turned off. The information or the DNA is still all there, but chemical changes occur so that certain parts or little sections are hidden. They're turned off or turned on. And these chemical changes that occur in your body were just like um, changes that happen where a font gets smaller or the color changes and then it's suddenly hidden. So take a look at this. In twins, genetic information is identical. So if we were to take a book with instructions on how to make twin one, and another book on how to make twin two, the words would be identical. But because they are different individuals who are exposed to different environmental factors, their epigenome is different. And when they're first young, or they haven't really been exposed to such hazardous situations, their epigenome is the same. So in both of these girls, their genetic information sort of looks like this. But as they grow up and as they're exposed to different environmental factors, their gene or their genome, their DNA actually changes, even though it's very small changes in things like punctuation. So notice how the words are still identical, but there's differences like um, commas, full stops, um, exclamation marks, and question marks. And although the, the words aren't actually changing, a sentence becomes interrogatory versus affirmative, and this changes the message that is conveyed. So what actually does this? What controls the genes that are expressed or the genes that are turned off, the commas, the full stops, exclamation marks, the question marks? Well, that is something known as the epigenome. And how the epigenome actually works is it's made up of something known as methyl groups. Methyl groups are hydrocarbon molecules that coil around histone proteins that go around your DNA. So this all sounds kind of complicated. So let me try to explain this by using a light bulb and a scarf. So if this is our histone protein right here, and it's light shining through, and this was your DNA, and it's just like this, and it's double-stranded, and it's kind of wound up. And if we were to zoom into a cell, we'd see that our DNA is jumbled up in the center or the nucleus of the cell just like this. But if we were to zoom in a little more and look in a little further, we'd actually see that the DNA is coiled around a histone protein, sort of like the image on my right, or sort of like this. But if the DNA is really tightly wrapped around the histone protein, then the light won't get through, and it will make that gene be silenced. And if the DNA is loosely coiled around the histone protein just like this, light still does seep through, and that gene is still expressed. And what affects the DNA and tells it to coil really tightly or very loosely around the DNA is something known as methyl groups or hydrocarbon molecules. So here's another visual that might help you understand. That picture on the right is actually a scientific image or a representation of what it actually looks like. So now let's put this into perspective. You're a really healthy person. You're a vegetarian, you run every morning, but your great-grandmother has actually smoked all her life. Okay, why should this impact you? It's an environmental thing. It doesn't really get passed on. Well, that's actually incorrect. Because your great-grandmother smoked, her epigenome was mutated. 
And what actually happened was that her epigenome made a particular gene in her body turn off and another one turn on. And although this didn't impact her in a way that was deadly, it only made her a little chubbier, made her hormones a little bit crazy. On you, when that epigenetic irregulation got passed on, you actually had cancer. So here's a statistic that shows how epigenetic irregulation gets passed on. And in a pregnant mother, three generations are directly exposed to the same environmental conditions at the same time. And the fourth generation can also be affected just through that inheritance. And the epigenetic um, whole irregulation does control um, whether a cell is a blood cell or a skin cell along with gene regulation. It does make a twin a little different from another. But why should this be important to you? Why is this important at all? Well, it's actually known to be the cause or the reason to why people often have cancer. So what is cancer? Cancer is the abnormal and unregulated duplication of cells in the body. So naturally, in your body and in my body, because we are healthy human beings, we all pertain genes known as a tumor suppressor gene and a proto-oncogene. And a balance between these two is what allows your body to duplicate all of its DNA and then split apart through a process known as cytokinesis. This whole process where a cell duplicates and then splits apart is known as mitosis. So if you look at this, in a normal human, you would have your tumor suppressor gene, which makes a cell stop replicating itself, and a proto-oncogene, which encourages cell division. But sometimes, because of epigenetic irregulation, your tumor suppressor gene can be turned off, and your proto-oncogene can be extra activated and become something known as an oncogene. So notice on the picture on my right, if you see there's a little section on the DNA that actually is purple, and that is the activated oncogene. And what that does is it instructs your cells to duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. And because that gene has been mutated, it is now malignant, and it's actually hurting your body and harming you, giving you cancer. Here's another visual that might help explain. The red part just gets mutated and then keeps duplicating and duplicating cells that are actually harming your body. Um, now, as you probably already know and as we are constantly told, things that impact cancer are things like smoking, UV light, um, radioactive substances, and processed food. And you should also know that epigenetic irregulation does not only cause things like cancer, but also diabetes and can be the cause of autism, too. Scientists started to look at things in twins, particularly. Be their gene, or their DNA, their words, are identical to each other. So how is it possible that one twin is sick and the other one isn't? And the reason for that is because of those little differences in punctuation, those little differences in their epigenome. So now that I told you about all these diseases and how your cells are suddenly uncontrollably duplicating itself and harming your body, you should know that there's actually a solution to all this. <laughs> so Dr. Pierre Issa, in 2005, actually started to look at something known as epigenetic therapy. When scientists figured out how the epigenome was so important, and the whole idea of methyl groups and these tags and histone proteins actually had such a large impact on such fatal diseases, they came across something known as epigenetic therapy. How epigenetic therapy actually works is it's a potent inhibitor that searches to remind genes or cells that they are a human cell and that they shouldn't be acting this way. They shouldn't be harming their own body. Unlike chemotherapy, the drug searches to turn on or turn off particular genes, where chemotherapy can kill your healthy cells along with your unhealthy ones. So Dr. Pierre Issa carried a clinical trial in 2005 with over 100 patients. And he tried out this drug on them, and over half of them were completely cured. 30 were left in remission, and only a small percentage was unaffected. So why should all of this apply to you? Why should you care at all about histone proteins, methyl groups, DNA, genes? Well, once you know, now that you know, that the things that you do today do not only impact you or hurt your body, you should know that these things will hurt your future generations. It will not only hurt your kids, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, but once all of that genetic information gets spread, it will harm the future. So take accountability over your actions. Don't expose yourself to hazardous and dangerous situations. And I believe that this innovative discovery of epigenetic therapy is worth spreading because it is important. 
And as Kofi once said, knowledge is power, information is liberating, education is the premise of progress in every society and in every family. We are already ruining um, future generations through global warming. Might as well not hurt their bodies too. Don't ruin someone else's future. Thank you.